If you or your partner are new to BDSM, it may surprise you to learn that not everyone who leads a scene is a dominant, and not everyone who responds or receives in a scene considers themselves submissive. So stay tuned today as I help you discover where you may land on the spectrum of BDSM roles and what it means for your play. If you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. I'm Miss LX and I'm so glad you're here because not only are we going to discuss the impact of top and bottom roles on your kinky play, but I've created an exclusive new Patreon resource just for you. My BDSM personality guide is a visual download that contains 21 of the most common styles of dominance and submissives with key descriptions that can guide you into a deeper understanding of your BDSM personality. Just go over to patreon.com slash lxerotica to get instant access. All right, so as I said in the opener, not everyone who leads a BDSM scene is a dominant, and not everyone who responds or receives in a scene considers themselves submissive. And this is due to the delineation in the lifestyle between dominant and submissive and top and bottom, which in my opinion speaks to the true nature of BDSM, but we'll get to that in a moment. Top simply refers to the one giving the sensations or directing the actions in a scene, and bottom simply means the party that receives the sensations or responds in a scene. In other words, all dominants are tops, but not all tops are dominants. All submissives are bottoms, but not all bottoms are submissives. Is that like all thumbs or fingers, but not all fingers or thumbs? Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> and this could be a switch point or simply your natural preference. Alternatively, you can also have a service top who leads the scene from the direction of the bottom instead of leading the bottom in a scene based on the top's desired agenda or kinks. For instance, I'm a dominant and operate as such in every aspect of my life, relationships, business, etc. But as is incredibly common for dominant women, my switch point occurs sexually. This is often our place of rest and release where we're free from the responsibilities and pressures of leadership. Conversely, I'm open to taking on the submissive role during a negotiated role play, but I do not desire to have a dominant nor serve, obey, and submit to a top outside of a sexual encounter. And therefore, I do not consider my sexual experiences to be submissive, but as a bottom simply receiving and responding to the sexual scene and subsequent stimulation. It's the whole don't tell me what to do unless I'm naked kind of mentality. Therefore, this leads me to the logical conclusion that operating as a dominant is not just about sex or kink. Think about it. If domination was all about sexual experience or proficiency in kinky skills, dominant and top would be synonymous. They would be wrapped up into one term, but they're not. Therefore, a core definition of domination must include skills and focus beyond sex or kink. And that is precisely why I do not view what most people consider soft domination to be the sweet and non-threatening style of dominance, but it's actually the core. I view soft domination as the core set of competencies, so to speak, that allow other dominant expressions to occur. In other words, being a skilled rigger doesn't necessarily make you a dominant, but it certainly indicates that you are a bondage top who is proficient at rope play. And according to my Patreon community, here are a few of the traits and skills the submissives, bottoms, and switches look for in an authentic dominant. Safety, trust, respect, presence, and observation emotional intelligence, effective communication, meaningful conversation, empathy, patience, care, laughter and levity, consistency, reliable, self-confident in their character and abilities, the ability to be gentle when angry, high self-esteem, high personal responsibility and accountability, 
emotionally available, able to assert and reinforce boundaries. These are the traits that build a sense of safety, foster trust, and develop devotion in the heart of a submissive from which all exploration and expression stems. So let's talk about the benefits here. Why would someone want to be a top or bottom rather than a dominant or submissive? Well, generally speaking, I have found the following factors to be the predominant incentives for both tops and bottoms who enjoy that arrangement more than or instead of a formal DS dynamic. The freedom to focus on your specific kinks, the freedom to explore various play partners and scene styles, no expectation for commitment or exclusivity, and minimal investment outside of the scene. So I hope this helped you discover where you may land on the spectrum of BDSM roles. And again, if you wanna go even deeper into 21 of the most common styles of dominance and submissives with key descriptions that can guide you into new expressions of your BDSM personality, just go over to patreon.com slash alexerotica to get instant access to my BDSM personality guide. And I will see you next week as we discuss the various types of arousal you can experience in your BDSM play.